House Bill 65, Representative James Men's Code of Criminal Procedure relative to the qualifications of jurors provided with the authority of certain persons. Representative James. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, members. Uh, members, this bill will restore uh, the right to serve on a jury to formerly incarcerated persons. Uh, members, um, I want you guys to, to look at, if you have the original bill, we made a substantial amendment um, to the bill in committee. Um, this bill, um, if we, we, we just did a bill by Representative Edmonds that furthers to help folks reintegrate to society, and I think that this bill is another step in that direction. Um, in the original bill, um, we took out um, indictment and it was only a conviction of a felony. The way the bill is currently um, that a person not under indictment, incarcerated under an order of imprisonment, or on probation and parole for a period of five years. Now members, this bill is more restrictive than what the law says to serve in this body. Um, I've talked to some of you about this, uh, but there are a couple things that, that I want us to think about. Uh, one, fully integration and in back to society with the option to be in a jury pool. And again, many of you know that just because you're in a jury pool, that does not mean you're gonna actually serve. There's a process called why dear, where you have to prove that you are not biased and you could be removed um, from that jury. And Mr. Speaker, I'll answer any questions. For a question, Representative Bacala. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, you talk about voir dire that could be included, but obviously you could challenge any uh, uh, any re uh, rejection, correct? You Would could, this be yes. the grounds for a rejection? So a DA might say, I don't want, you know, somebody who's been convicted of burglary to be on a jury for a burglar. I'm sure just like they, you know, if you're arrested, if you've been arrested before, that's, that's grounds for for being struck as well. So I'm sure that a DA will, will strike it. And then there, there are also civil juries. We, we, we're focusing on criminal, but there are also civil cases as well. But, but to strike it, it can still be, the strike can be challenged. Most definitely. So just, just like you, they can be may, challenged and, today. and you only have a certain number of strikes, correct? That's correct. So if I burn, say, three or five strikes, then they're challenged because I'm, I'm omitting jur uh, prior felons and you've already said it's fine for them to serve, then it's probably likely to be overturned. Or the, or the judge is likely to say, no, this person is qualified, so your strike is improper. The, just like they can strike today for someone who had previously been arrested with no conviction, that, that doesn't change, Representative Bacala. Correct, and I, I think that is a concern that you're creating a, 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 a you're, you're putting a DA in a position of likely a strike if it's a similar crime and that that strike is going to be challenged and you're creating all kind of new issues with the the juror and and possibly uh, appeals issues because somebody who was struck was was the, the judge agreed uh, so, so do you see this as greatly complicating a process that shouldn't be complicated i, I don't see it as complicated i think your, your line of questioning is, is complicating a very simple process we heard from the da's in committee and, and none of them addressed that concern and i don't think they they sent out a note well were, today. were the of da's, course, asked, were the on, DAs in favor of it since you bring that up well i don't they're not opposed to it I, did you get a note I didn't. Well, I got, uh, okay, I didn't get a note, but I'm not, I'm not sure I and didn't if, get if some they phone were calls. Opposed, you've been here long enough to know that you would have received a note. You probably see our good friends on the back. I don't see anybody on the back from the association. They weren't happy with the bill, but they did say in committee you were there that the amendment greatly improved the bill that they were thoroughly against. I, I, think, the, the I think the issue, we can get beyond that. The issue is, does it, does it add does it add quality to the process? And I know you're not, you, your bill is not to add quality to the, to the jury process. Your, your, your bill is to offer the jury availability to more people. And obviously it, it, it goes hand in hand with our vote last year, uh, you know, allowing convicted persons to vote because you have to be on the voter roll. So this is sort of an extension of that, I believe. Well, it, it, it's substantially different from what we did last year. Again, the amendment substantially shrunk the, the pool of formerly incarcerated persons that this bill will apply to when we add it. You can't be under an order of indictment. Um, you have to complete probation and parole for five years. So yes, this is in the, in the same neighborhood, but not on the same street as could, what we did could, last year because we substantially reduced the could number. Could someone be 
convicted, serve parole, uh, incarcerated, serve a parole term uh, for, say, rape, and five years after the end of parole be on a jury for a rape case. Just like someone can do that and serve in this body, this, this bill is more restrictive than the obligations and the rights for someone to serve here. So if we can say that that same person can come and make the laws and sit in that same seat where you're sitting and stand where I'm standing, I think that it's, it's um, incumbent upon us to say that that person can be in well, a jury I, pool. Well, I didn't vote for that either. So that to, to use that analogy, at least with some of us, is, doesn't work very well. But, but murderers could be on juries for murder trials, potentially rapists for rape trials, burglars for burglar trials. You would open all that up within this bill as long as there's a passage of five years from the completion of sentence, including probation or parole. That's what the bill says. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. For our question, Representative Stefanski. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative James, did, did you talk to anybody that wants to serve on the jury? <laughs> some people said that the last place they want to go back to is court, uh, but some, some members that I talked to, um, like Representative Bacala, the, the law says that if you're a registered voter, you go in a jury pool. Many of them learned after they registered to vote last year that it didn't apply to them. But, oh. but I, I will concede that <laughs> some folks said the last place they want to go back to is the jury. Did it's, you know that court. all I do is get calls daily about people trying to get out of jury duty? And I get those calls too, and, and I, never, I, I never respond favorably. Uh, right here in Baton Rouge, we can't even have jury trials right now because they, our jury pool is not diverse enough. So we've been having to um, withhold having a jury trial um, because the jury pool isn't diverse enough. Research after research says that a more diverse jury is a fair jury. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative. For a question, Representative Smith. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So, Rep. James, this simply gives an opportunity to an individual who has gotten off paper five years serve their time and no longer are under order of imprisonment of any kind to be able to get a letter saying that you may be you may be called to jury duty you may be invited into, invited, into, a, right. in, into and, a pool right and yes. they fill out and, and also under you can't be under an order of indictment, indictment which is a, a step right. further because right. you could be under an order of indictment and serving this body and just like Representative Stefanski just said, a lot of people, when they get that letter, they go, oh, Lord, I got to go serve on a jury. I don't want to do that. How do I get out of it? Now, that gives them the opportunity to say the same thing, correct? Most just, definitely. So it really is simply saying you have the opportunity to receive the letter of an invitation. You have an opportunity to, to be in the pool and possibly be selected. Yeah, thank you. For a question, Representative Marcel. Thank you, Representative James, and thank you for bringing this bill. Do, do you believe that when people have served their sentence, that should be the end of that? I mean, I, I think that in, unless you have a life sentence at the end of whatever that judge um, sentenced you to, that, that we cannot continue to, to give everyone a life sentence. Right, but, and, and that's where I was going. So once a person has completed whatever time that the judge has given them, whether that's probation, parole, or whatever that is, and some jail time, I believe that you know that that person should be afforded all rights. Let, let me ask you another question. When people uh, are sentenced to jail time and they go and they serve their time, when they come out, do we tell them that they no longer have to pay taxes? No, we don't. You sure about that? I, Do they I'm, have to pay the same homeowner taxes? They pay the same, they say the same, same taxes. Same taxes as, they, as they, all of us do. Oh, okay, I thought so. Let me ask you another question. Representative James, are you an attorney? I am. Are you familiar with how to strike jurors? I am. Okay, so you passed the bar. I did, all, all nine sections on the first time. Okay, okay, so you, you're well acquainted. Are you well acquainted with how to strike jurors and who can get on and who can't? I am. And would this bill change that process at all? It's, it's the same process that, that the DAs employ today and defense attorneys. And we keep talking about criminal. We also have a whole other section of the law. What about the civil? With, with civil trials. You, you still have an opportunity to question whether someone is, is biased or not. 
Um, and, you know, the, the DAs, you were in the committee. This is not a concern that the people that represent the organization that, that do this every day, this is not a concern that they have with the bill. And, and that's what I was going to say. Uh, in the committee, I did not hear the objections screaming. From, matter of fact, I didn't see any red cards. Well, they were at the table um, in committee um, after the, the amendment. Right, again, I mean after the amendment. Yeah, they, they didn't say that they were in love with the bill at that point. But, but again, you know, I didn't get a note today. Um, and if they were opposed, we would have, we would have heard from them by now. And so this, this bill is good for all Louisiana. You know, right. I, I think it is. You're from Baton Rouge, and you know that right now. Um, we have walk, some issues. We, we can't even have a jury trial. I walked in court two weeks ago, and I saw a DA explaining to a victim's family that they couldn't even go far with the trial because we have an issue with um, our jury pool. And it, it's, it's known research. There, there are assumptions that people that have formerly been incarcerated can't make an informed decision, can't be unbiased, and that's all opinion. But the facts state that a more diverse jury is a fairer jury. Right, and, and it's supposed to be jurors of your own peers, and it's going to be difficult to get that if we don't include everyone in that, right? That's correct. Thank you so much for the bill. Thank you, Rep. And thank you for passing the bar. <laughs> thank you. For our question, Representative Mack. Representative James, um, I went in committee that day, as you know. Um, right now, you can be in charge, the DA can institute prosecution two different ways. One is why by a bill of information. The other is by indictment. Correct. So under the law, as it's uh, under the proposed law, as it, as you're, you know, wanting to amend it, um, would be if you're under a bill of a bill of information for a year, two years, three years, as we, you know, sometimes it takes that long to get through the judicial system. You could still be eligible to be a juror under under the law for which you intend to pass. What the, what the DA said that even today, right now, if you're under an article of indictment, you can't serve on a jury. That was the testimony from the, the association. And what the bill says, and my understanding of the amendment is that even after indictment, the way it real reads today is under indictment, you still have to wait another five years from the way I read it. Okay, but. Did they distinguish between the bill of in, a bill of an indictment or a bill of information? Because it's two not, different things. They didn't go that deep into the conversation. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's just a concern. And, and essentially, what your bill does is you're off probation or parole for a period of five years. Um, let me run through it. Let me ask you a question because I wasn't there that day. I got you. Um, you get convicted of a felony offense. Um, it's not five years from the date of conviction. It's five years from the date you're either released from incarceration or off parole or off probation. Correct. It's five so, years from the day that you're either released and off for probation or parole. Then that five-year clock starts. So if you got a sentence of five years, it was suspended, and you got five years probation, you would do your five years probation. Then you'd have to wait another five years before you could be eligible to serve on a jury? That's correct. Okay. All right. Just want to make sure I had it. Thank, Thank you. you. There are no other questions, Representative James. You have a right to close. Members, I ask for your favorable passage, and I want you to think about one thing. This bill is more restrictive than what the law says to serve in this body. I want you to think about that. You can serve in the House of Representatives, but you cannot be eligible for jury service. I think something is wrong with that. You can serve in this body and represent the people of this great state, but you can't be in a jury pool. And this all the bill says, that you could be included in a jury pool and subject to a voir dire. And I ask for your favorable passage as we continue to move to try to help people that have been rehabilitated, rehabilitated and five years past to have the option to be selected into a jury pool and then go through voir dire and possibly serve on a jury. I think that this is a common sense piece of legislation. And again, remember, this bill is more restrictive than what the law says to serve in this body and sit where you're seating today. Members, I ask for your favorable passage. Representative Miguez, why do you rise? With 20 members joining Representative Miguez and a request for a lockout, quorum call members, not quorum call, request for lockout, excuse me. Lockout is obvious. Quorum call members, vote your machine and only your machine. Quorum call. Representative Lyons is here. Representative Carpenter is here. Representative Hodges is here. Are you through voting? Clerk will close the machine. 89 members present and a quorum. Representative James moves final passage of the bills. Many in favor of final passage vote yes. Those opposed vote no. The clerk will open the machine. Vote your machines, members. Representative Lyons, yes. 
Are you through voting? Are you through voting? Clerk will close the machine. 26 yeas, 62 nays, and the bill fails to pass. Representative Miguez moves to reconsider the vote by which the bill failed to pass and lay that motion on the table. Without objection, so ordered.